Welcome to the show that looks at truth, fiction, and reality with a smirk. I'm Aaron Peterson. I'm Amanda Sink. And I'm Zach Parkerson. And welcome to Smirk. Each week, one of our hosts introduces an original story, and then we use that as a springboard for spirited discussion on whatever the moral or theme of their story was. This week, it's Amanda's turn. What are you going to talk to us about? Things that make us angry. Not, I don't know. <laughs> Did you jump ahead already? No. I just figure then I can get Zach engaged by saying that there's something negative in it. I definitely perked up. <laughs> <laughs> you started listening, put your headphones back on. Yeah, I've started paying attention to you for once. <laughs> it's a rarity. Typically, he just leaves the room. Mm-hmm. I don't need to know the story. You'll right. find I out. About how the, I just talk about how the world hurts. <laughs> Jesus. All right. Yeah. Are you ready, Amanda? I'm ready if you guys are ready. Let's do it. It's amazing how much things can change from one minute to the next. I'm on my way home, and it's during rush hour. Of course. It's been a long day, and I've already seen one person veer into my lane and almost sideswipe me. I just want to pull into my garage, toss my keys on the table, change into some pajamas, and relax for the night. I'm driving with my windows cracked a little for some fresh air and playing some acoustic music, apt with my current mood. As I'm driving, I take a right turn onto a somewhat congested road. But what's new right now? So now I'm headed northbound in the left lane. I look ahead and see a motorcyclist in the right lane who gets something like change tossed at him from a car in the left lane. Now he's flailing around his arms towards the car in the left lane. There was obviously some altercation happening, but who throws change at someone? I wonder about the possibilities of what happened to cause these two to be clearly arguing in the middle of the road. Maybe the car didn't look for the motorcyclist and almost hit him. Maybe the motorcyclist tried to squeeze down the middle of the road to bypass traffic. I've definitely seen that a time or two. In the midst of my curiosity within my head, I see the motorcyclist veer into the left lane, tapping on the window of the car. This guy is nuts, I'm thinking. But as soon as he does that and gets back into the right lane, the most insane thing I've ever visualized happened. The car slams into the motorcyclist at an angle, going from the left lane through the right lane and putting the motorcycle on the grass near a mailbox and pole, after dragging the motorcyclist with the car for a few more seconds. I'm absolutely stunned. This person just intentionally hit a motorcyclist for an altercation they were having. Over what? 15 cents, little man? The cyclist got up okay enough for being veered into by a vehicle and walked over to the car behind him. But the car just kept driving on like nothing happened. The driver that hit him, that is. I guess those watch out for motorcycle stickers only make the people blissfully unaware more cautious. Does nothing for the people who are spiteful and filled with rage. 15 cents, little man. Put Put that that in oh. my hand. <laughs> if that money doesn't show, then you owe me, owe me, owe. <laughs> my wow. junk of love. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Well, so what do you, you know, guys? We can't even talk. We can't even say anything else about that movie without going to an explicit tag. So let's move on. <laughs> That's a fair point. <laughs> That's true. So, what do you guys think the moral of this story is? Um, don't let your rage consume you. What about you, Zach? A f- is the name of your story a fistful of dollars? <laughs> <laughs> it should be. That'd be sweet. Yeah, something something about people suck. Watch out for the damn motorcycles. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Can you try a better moral than people <laughs> suck? People suck. I don't know you offer me. <laughs> they suck. Every last one. Of, no, I'm kidding. Our listeners are great. This is going to be his else, response. Though. Every story. Yeah. No, I mean, it's something about, yeah, something about being unnecessarily angry or I don't know what you offer me, Aaron. <laughs> Oh, no, it's think. really just watch out for the damn motorcyclists. That's it? <laughs> yeah. That's moral? So yep. this is a story about cars? It, it's a story about people. We'll get to the discussion points right now. Okay. Well, all right. Like I'm loaded. Now mm-hmm. I want to go watch Jane Silent Bob. <laughs> I know, right? Mm-hmm. What level of fault do you feel, if any, the motorcyclist played in this story? Because he did tap on the window, kind of veering over, and you know he wasn't the one who particularly instigated it. But he did kind of go back and forth with this vehicle. So did he play a part and have a role in this? Yeah. yeah. To yeah. what degree? Like, would you consider this partly his fault? Or would you say, no, you shouldn't hit another car. You shouldn't uh, hit a motorcyclist with your car. Triggered. Triggered. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I, I'm trying to remember the, the chain of events. So the car hit the motorcyclist first? So basically, the car there? threw change at the motorcyclist. Right, which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> Love that. Well, for what reason, we don't know. <laughs> nope, no reason. There's no context. Because remember, well, there's, there is a reason. There's a toll up ahead. He's trying to help the motorcyclist <laughs> out. <laughs> so yeah, the guy, you know, you had missed because you were playing with your iPhone in the car. Is that he had to have to the window be like, hey, bro, I don't have enough money for the upcoming toll. <laughs> Can you help me out? <laughs> so basically, there's a person who is behind all this who's just witnessing it, turns onto this road, and all they see is change thrown at a motorcyclist. Mm-hmm. And then the motorcyclist taps on the window. He veers into the, the left lane because he can see that they're arguing. The motorcyclist is throwing his arms around. He taps on the window of the car, mm. gets back in his lane, and then immediately the car in the left lane just veers over almost head on and hits the motorcyclist and just leaves the scene. And you say, is the motorcyclist at fault for is that? For, did or he play a part did he play in a being part fault? Of that? Mm-hmm. I mean, you know what? At some point, you have to be the cooler head in the room. Otherwise, mm-hmm. all you end up in, you know, that's how you end up in dueling pistols and stuff. <laughs> so I, yeah, I mean, you got to be the bigger man sometimes. I, you know, sometimes you just have to walk away. And if I'm on a motorcycle, I don't think you're, I'm going to win against a car, <laughs> so I would probably think that he, this is a good point to know I'm at a disadvantage. Maybe follow him home, <laughs> find out where he lives, stake out his house. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. That sounds illegal and awful. I mean, it's not his fault, but it's also he aggravated it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Zach, what do you think? Yeah, I think they're both dumb. <laughs> I, yeah, I think they're both at fault. I don't think the guy should have veered over and hit him with a motorcycle, but I don't know. I don't know what happened before the change is in it because something had to happen before he tossed the change at the guy. No, unless he's knows. just throwing money out the window for fun, I guess. <laughs> That's so, really that, that is really a sticking point. I mean, I, I know it's your isn't story. it weird. Can you write a prequel? Because <laughs> yeah, where's no. the prologue? <laughs> we'll talk. We'll talk about the limitations in this story towards the end. Okay, but I I agree. I think that you have to know when to say this isn't a battle worth fighting. You have to pick them wisely. And when you're on a motorcycle and you have a Mazda in the left lane, you probably shouldn't try to piss them off even more. Shout out to our sponsor, Mazda. (laughs) (laughs) Well, the Mazda vehicle is the one that hit the motorcyclist, so I don't think they want me promoting them. But The the one thing I will say, I mean, you threw change at somebody, you're you're antagonizing them. And I just want to... Why are you throwing change at someone? It's very important. I don't have all the information, Aaron. There's got to be a reason. Right? We just don't know. I mean, I don't know. Maybe the guy went to school. Maybe this guy, the guy in the car, used to beat the crap out of the motorcyclist in high school, <laughs> or the guy in the motorcycle used to beat the crap out of the guy in the car, and he threw change at him. And he's like, "Here, this is this is a representation of all my hospital bills." You son of a bitch. You know, I don't the guy know. In the motorcycle slept with the guy in the Mazda's first wife, ending his marriage, and he spotted him on the roadway, and he tossed change at him. It's all he had. Mm-hmm. I like so it. So then the other guy knocked the window. He's like, hey, he doesn't know the guy. He doesn't know who's in the minivan, Mazda, whatever. <laughs> and it so could, then he's like, you know what? Screw this guy. And he just runs into him. It could be a woman. Maybe they had a breakup. Maybe That's she's. he's like, I want my stuff back. And she's like, this is all you get because this is all I ever got. And throws 15 cents at him. Oh, exactly 15 cents. That's even weirder. I, I mean, why no exact change? That's representation <laughs> of something. It's representative of something. Jay and Silent Bob. <laughs> was, it, was it a dime and five pennies? Was it? <laughs> this is very was, specific. Was it, do you you brought it up. It's an important, it's an imperative. We will talk about oh, the change issues. at the end. I don't end. know how many coins hit this guy. Is it 15 <laughs> pennies? Because then that's a whole other situation. That's like an assault rifle. <laughs> <laughs> Trigger. Yeah, let's stop. Too. <laughs> Do you guys think that car drivers are responsible for being more aware on the road, even if the motorcyclist is kind of acting like a jerk? Regardless, even if you take this story aside and you think in general. Do you think that well, you would have to because this was all the driver's <laughs> fault? <laughs> no, I don't have the whole story. <laughs> that's, that's true. There's a backstory that we need. Yeah, I agree. I'm not ready. To, I'm not ready to commit to who the good guy is here. <laughs> what was your question? I was. I'm still focused on pennies. <laughs> Do you think that car Walk drivers are responsible for being more aware of the road in terms of looking out for motorcyclists, even if that motorcyclist is driving like a jerk? Well, yeah. How about everybody just be as aware as humanly possible at all times? Ah, oh, that's a good response. I like it. That's an accurate response. Mm-hmm. I mean, that 
you you have a two ton vehicle at your at your fingertips. You should be treating it like a weapon at all times. Well, and some people have the argument when a motorcyclist, let's say they do veer down the middle of the lane, because I think we've all seen that before. They just kind of zoom by or go off on the shoulder of the road. Mm-hmm. That's not the car's fault if something happens to them while the motorcyclist is doing that. But in L.A., it's actually legal. Well, and some people have the feeling that, you know, you're the one who's making all of these I don't know, dangerous decisions. So I shouldn't be completely held responsible for you making a bad decision. Oh, I can't imagine people trying to alleviate their own sense of responsibility (laughs) as much as possible. (laughs) This is America we're talking about. Uh, Oh, did you specify that in the story? I don't recall that. So it was definitely U.S. currency. (laughs) It's Florida. (laughs) (laughs) Hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, it's still, it boils down to the same answer because you're responsible to always know your surroundings. Driving, you know, people don't take it seriously anymore. I mean, obviously, you're, people are writing books while they're driving. So, I mean, they don't take it nearly as serious as they should. But transportation, if you do any real research on it, I mean, that is a weapon you have at your disposal. It's it's it kills many, many, many hundreds of thousands of lives every year around the world. So be cautious in it. And there would be a lot less accidents. I, I've... I have a motorcycle. I don't ride it often, but I used to ride one and I would ride to work. I could not ride to work because every, every day, and I'm not exaggerating, every day that I rode it, I almost got hit. Didn't you actually almost get hit in a parking lot too? At a Taco Bell. (laughs) Yeah. Ooh, that's, ooh, I want some Taco Bell though. Yeah. I mean, it does make you hungry for tacos, right? (laughs) Everything does. Yeah. Somebody almost hit me going in a Taco Bell. I mean, but I used to try to, because it was one of those things where I, I like, I don't know. Why do you ride a motorcycle? I don't know. It's like riding a bicycle. It's just, you know, faster and louder. But you know what? I didn't I didn't understand riding a motorcycle until my friend let me ri- uh, ride his and I get it. Ah, see? I mean, it's hard to explain though, right? Yeah, there's just yeah, there's a feeling, a sensation you get. It's just it's exhilarating. Yeah, it's called terror. Eh, no, I don't <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't particularly scared. Yeah. There's something about having the wind in your face or I mean not on your face, you should be wearing a helmet. But <laughs> There's something about riding against the wind. I don't know. It's just, it's very involved. It's just, I don't know. It's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Until you try to do it in, in the morning and people almost hit you. Yeah. I, I mean, see that. every day they're drinking their coffee. By the way, why is it, why is it people think they can text, drink coffee, uh, do their hair and play with the radio dial all at the same time while operating a weapon. Are they I, octopus? Uh, How are they able to touch so many I've things? I've seen at once? it happen. <laughs> yeah, I've seen it happen. He's right. <laughs> no, you know what? Uh, I was about to. I was going to jump on a similar soapbox there, and people they take for granted what cars are. Like it's this is yeah, several ton machine, and you'd, people don't really respect the gravity of it. I would say. Well, and if it's a semi that hurts a you know hurts somebody who's in a vehicle or crashes into a car, it's one hundred percent a semi's fault. Whereas, if according you, to the law, I don't agree. With, according to most people, I don't agree with that. But right, yeah. but if it comes down to a motorcyclist being hit by a car, it's well, they shouldn't have been doing what they were doing. Well, I mean, because everybody plays a part. It's kind of like all right, so put it and put it in context from people's perspective, and I don't agree with that because I one hundred percent love. Owner, uh, People that drive trucks. I, I it's in, Everything you own was on a truck at some point. They have a really hard job and they demand a hell of a lot more respect mm-hmm. than they get. They demand it because they don't get much respect and they do a really, really hard job. That said, uh, it's one of those things where you look at it. If you walk in a room and there's four guys laying on the ground and they've had the, they look like they've had the crap beat out of them and you see a guy looking like The Rock standing there and you see a guy looking like Gary Coleman standing there, you automatically assume – or I'm sorry, use Kevin Hart because that's probably a more popular <laughs> reference. You, you automatically assume the Rock just beat the crap out of four guys. It's definitely his fault, right? You couldn't possibly fathom that maybe Kevin Hart is a black belt in karate. Yeah, yeah it is. It is hard to imagine. See, <laughs> there you go. He's also really short, so he can get around easier. Yeah, he's a well, spider that's why monkey. He's a martial artist. <laughs> Yeah, I there's just so there's a lot of hypocrisy in terms of that. And Zach's right. People don't want to take accountability for their own part in anything. So and I do feel bad for semi drivers because they do a lot of hard work in terms of never even being able to spend a lot of time with their family Mm -hmm. and spending that much time on the road, which sounds like it's not difficult. But I've just ridden in a semi for a week long trip and. It is exhausting just to sit yeah. <laughs> in a semi. 
But in terms of motorcyclists, people don't – a lot of people, and I don't want to say everyone, a lot of people just don't seem to care about being mindful for them and looking out for them and being aware. Could there be a motorcyclist around me? Well, because I okay, I fall back to people really don't consider the gravity of what they're driving anymore, the situation. And society as a whole has become more of a self-obsessed kind of culture. So people are in their car and uh, – self-obsessed isn't, isn't fair. They're in their car and that's their world, right? They got 20 minutes to work. They got 20 minutes back home. That's their time to – Deconnect or decompress or you know catch up on whatever they're trying to do. Obviously, it's time to do their hair. It's time to do their makeup. It's time to do a lot of other things. So I think they get lost in their world. It's their world. It's their space. They get lost in that world. And sometimes motorcycles are a lot harder to see. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of blind spots. A lot harder to see. I I can't say it's always the car's fault because if you're a motorcyclist, like I said, I've, I have one. Uh, you also have to be aware. You're responsible too. It's not just the car. Because we know there's a lot of places where the car is not going to see us. And you can't just go zipping by a car and be mad when they pull out in front of you. You know, you got to be aware of at all times. So since you're obviously somebody who rides a motorcycle and you're oh, aware of the rules. motorcyclist, the- <laughs> man. Professional. Yeah. All the time. <laughs> what do you think that motorcyclists can do to make themselves more visible to other people or things that they should just stop doing if they don't want to get hurt? Mm. Honk. Carry a crowbar. Carry a crowbar. Honk the entire time. <laughs> uh, obviously, carry your own change to throw back. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. Uh, really, I mean, it's it's just like simple driving. You just, you know, let people know that you're there. I mean, use your signal lights and everything else. If you pull, I, I never try to ride side by side with anybody. I don't think any motorcyclist should. I don't ride side by side with anything in a car, in a, on a motorcycle, anything because. People don't pay attention anymore. So, yeah. yeah, that's really what you just just be aware of your surroundings, just like anything else. Just like walking down the street, according to True Crime. <laughs> you got to stop <laughs> listening to those True Crime podcasts. Man, they are haunting you. They are. Any tips, yeah. Zach? No, just every, everybody be more aware. I mean, there's not this, uh, this, this not an equation to it. Just everybody be more mindful. Stop worrying about what songs on Spotify. Is this a safety episode <laughs> no we'll, we'll get it to my reason for bringing oh, this up there's soon a reason. there's a reason yeah but i do want to say motorcyclists seem to treat it some motorcyclists seem to treat their driving more like they're on an atv in the woods or like going through a trail uh that depends on the kind of motorcycle you're on because you can't do that <laughs> on certain bikes but if you're on a crotch rocket yes most more often than right. not right but there are some people who don't – you know, I don't know if it's an actual law where you have to use your arm to signal. But I feel like it's not a bad practice no, to not. try to let the people know around you, hey, I'm going to be moving on over here. So be aware and don't zip around. But also for cars, I think you guys have both touched on it. Pay attention. <laughs> even if even if you don't think semi or not semis, even if you don't think that motorcycles are going to be out because of the season, if it's a nicer day, they might be. If it's fifty degrees, some some of them will still go out. If there's not salt on the road, they're gonna. Hey, it's a nice enough weather. If we're in the Midwest, let's mm-hmm. do it. So you have to be more cautious. If you, I'm on a motorcycle, man, I'm like Babe Ruth calling a home run. I'm like I'm pointing left to right. I'm like there, and then there. <laughs> And then there, because I don't want to get hit. <laughs> uh, yeah. And also, don't be a jerk with all your road rage. <laughs> you really Jerks. are doing a safety lesson right now, aren't you? <laughs> okay. So, what do you guys- Because people really turn into smirk to be preached to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not preaching. It's I'm bringing this up for-, for I think you should be less safe. I just wanted to throw in a counterpoint. <laughs> <laughs> don't wear a helmet. You know, just pull out in front of people, throw change randomly th- <laughs> throughout. Hit the, the motorcyclists streets. if they make you mad. Uh, Knock on every that. car you pass, just to antagonize. <laughs> do you guys think that my story is truth or fiction? Truth. Probably truth, but I'm hoping it's fiction. This happened in Sarasota, Florida recently. It's made national news. So is it there's, truth? Yep. There's a video. 
on YouTube if you want to see <laughs> way, it. Way to go, Zach, because we're like, <laughs> five minutes of explanation, you still didn't say. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a video on YouTube if you do want to see what happened. And that's why there's no preface to the story of what happened. Somebody videotaped the whole thing. Were they the one driving? <laughs> <laughs> no, there's, there's a, somebody who's behind it all. And mm. I, I created- Did they record an, this on their phone while driving? No, I think they had a passenger because uh, it doesn't look uh, like it's from the driver's okay. side. But I don't, uh, I, I'm, I don't know. Just looks like it's coming from the dash. This matters. It, facts matter, Amanda. Yeah. Anyway, we so we talked about this a couple weeks ago. <laughs> there's no. That's why I can't give you a a prologue to the story of what actually happened because people don't really know. But this we'll, person, we'll put the link to the video in the uh, website. Link, yeah. So. Yeah. But hit the person totally just left. Didn't even like look behind them. Does so they're it show them throwing the change. <laughs> no, that was actually a witness statement oh, that I found in a story. Oh, yeah. What's the point then? <laughs> I don't want to watch this anymore. Uh, I can give you the link and maybe you can find the witness's name and say this is really important You're crucial not information. understanding the gravity of this. Yeah, let's get our first interview on on Smirk. Let's interview these witnesses. <laughs> let's get the lady who saw the 15. Why did they throw 15 cents? <laughs> what, was the, what was the change denomination? <laughs> I didn't even know if it was 15 cents. It just said change. And I was like, I need to incorporate this in here. Maybe it was actually a dollar. It was Canadian dollar. It just threw it. It was so dramatic because it flew back in the car three times. Uh, I'll ping you with this dollar. Damn it. I can't. Give me the change. All right. Isn't that horrifying, though? That people have are so callous that they don't care that they just and his body like drug along for a few more seconds when that car after the car hit him because he angled it like he he aimed for that he aimed for the motorcyclist and it actually took me by surprise when i saw it i was like there's no way that it's that maybe he like bumped him or something no he was like i'm taking you out they catch the guy or no they're still looking for them they had plates. Of the, nobody yeah, plates they're right? still trying to find them. I I don't know if there's an update at this point. Oh, this week on but... Smirks Most Wanted. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be a true crime spinoff. I like it. I like it. Mm-hmm. No, I don't think it's that horrible. No, I just, it's That's there. what people do. Oh. On the grand scale of atrocities, this ranks pretty low. <laughs> I would agree. You tell, me the, you tell me the story. You tell me this happened for real. I think, oh, okay. Yeah, that is pretty depressing, isn't it? You're right. People look- do suck. I'm just looking at the see moral of the story. What I tell you, Eric? <laughs> comes all around, <laughs> comes back around, comes back around. Yep, all right, yep. JT. Is that a Justin Timberlake song? Yeah, yeah. Everything. What goes You're around? Old. <laughs> bye, bye, bye. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a classic. Uh, that's a classic. It's old, right? Yeah, that's uh, it's definitely old. Well, I appreciate the uh, safety tip this week. That's really good, <laughs> everybody. You drive safe while you listen to this <laughs> podcast. And by the way, we love truckers. And yeah. you probably listen to a lot of podcasts, so thank you. Thanks for all the hard work you do for us, so I can <laughs> get my you Sephora. Mazda and Taco Bell. <laughs> you were you wait? Were you searching for a video to write your story? Is that what was going on here, or did you you've seen this and you're like, I gotta tell that story? No, I heard the story about the motorcyclist being hit, and we. I knew of someone because I work in the insurance industry who recently got oh, hit. Oh, this as had a to be huge news in that world. Well, I mean, yes and no, but one of our own customers got hit by a motorcycle or as a motorcyclist. And so that came up in conversation. And then one of my colleagues brought up that somebody was intentionally hit, not even accidentally. Targeted, like Jaws. Yeah. (laughs) And I was like, there's no way this really happened. And it made national news. It was in Sarasota, Florida. You know what we got to do, Zach? We got to recut this video. We got to start with the speech from Jaws. (laughs) The USS Indianapolis speech. <laughs> and then it, le- then it leads to the, the car. You have to put the change the in there because the change isn't in the video. So you guys need to film yeah, yourself film throwing our change. Own. Like you'll get on your motorcycle, I'll toss change at you. <laughs> I like it. Yes, please. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> the dramatic recreation. It'll, be, it'll do like the black and white pan over your, your corpse or whatever. <laughs> like the old, like America's Most Wanted. Well, just, I'll be Robert Stack and be like, this is our dramatization of, of real events. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on board. We're still Let's looking for this car. <laughs> Let's now, this. Now all over the state line of Florida, targeting motorcyclists. <laughs> <laughs> You'll know you're a victim when you get hit with pennies. <laughs> <laughs> That's a serial killer leaving his mark. <laughs> they find this motorcycle is dead, sir. We found 15 cents. Oh, again? Oh, no. <laughs> Every week. <laughs> Bring in the feds, man. This is going too far. All right. What was the name of your story? Rage. Oh, 
should be 15 cents, little man. (laughs) (laughs) I like it. Sorry. I'm sorry. As soon as you said 15 cents, I got that stuck in my head. I know. It's so good. Uh, That's the reason I put it in there. All right. As our show goes, we will occasionally pick listener stories to read and discuss on Smirk. If you'd like the chance to have yours read, uh, email them to mystory at smirkpodcast.com. Join the conversation by joining our Facebook group and give your safety tips. (laughs) Or follow us on Twitter at Smirk Podcast and be sure to use the show's hashtag Smirk. And please share the show with your friends, by the way. If you if you're enjoying this, you know, hit the little share button and on whatever you're using, and please share it on Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, whatever, because that really helps people find the show. And the best thing about doing a podcast is people listening to it. <laughs> so don't miss an episode. Be sure to subscribe to Smirk on your podcast app of choice and check out our website at smirkpodcast.com. Remember, as you write your own life story, always remember to tell it with a smirk. It's like we had vehicle safety week. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man, when you guys see the video. It's cray cray. You going to text it to us? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, we're watching in unison here. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Oh, my God. Yeah, Did you see how long his body was, like, still under the car? I think they're about to do it in slow motion, so I'm going to find out. This is, like, commentary for YouTube. This is amazing. (laughs) Um, This has got to be. This has to be a burgeoning industry somewhere. He is definitely yeah. He yeah. Punches up. Oh, <laughs> oh! It's so pointed. I mean, what do you want from him? It looks like they're like he's smacking the window, like bitch. <laughs> yeah, as though as though someone just are changing him, and he's like, what? Oh, <laughs> and then they oh, have yeah. a little well, kid. Well, yeah, no, they have to show him as being a big victim, right? He's got to have a kid, <laughs> <laughs> right? It's probably not even as he picked him up at the Walmart. <laughs> Take this picture. Hurry up. He just brought a baby like here. Do you see him like I think running he's around? Is no, he's trying to get help. Oh, he's oh, got a chest tattoo. That's a uh, upsetting guy. Don't judge people by their tattoos. You're right. You're right. But really, though, what's up with that beard? <laughs> that beard is not good. Yeah, that's uh, that's never. No one's ever rocked that look. <laughs> wow. No one's ever tried that, and they shouldn't. You weren't kidding. Um. <laughs> did you almost say you're Amanda Sink? I, I did. I'm Amanda Sink. <laughs> I didn't know my voice got so deep. I'm Aaron Peterson. Yep. And I'm Zach Parkerson. <laughs> <laughs> that was so natural. <laughs> <laughs>